Welcome on in, everybody, to what surely promises to be a great Pokemon Unite matchup right here as we have the top number one team in the game. Yes, by the numbers, by the stats. You can see when you go into the game's rankings, Zugrug at number one, but all of these guys. We're going to talk about each player probably individually at some point, and uh, now a lot more new information out here. This match comes from October 12th, actually, my son's birthday, his fourth birthday. We'll speed up at the start, you know, just after that ready go, and then get everybody up to the end of the lane and let's try to observe just you know so much action is going to be going on this is really going to be high level play certainly anytime that you have the top number one ranked team involved that's just a given but we obviously hope that the opponents give them a run for their money and so obviously if you've seen this team play before you're going to see this layout typically happen here especially in masters but lucario gonna solo that top lane that's played by lutano on team tv that would be their names i've also heard love these and so then we got bottom lane uh zugrug our tank with indie bear their support and we do have Goof GG playing Bulbasaur right here. And the interesting thing will be Toon, actually. Toon is kind of always my wild card. So Toon got W right there, playing as, uh, right now, Charmeleon. Obviously, a jungling Charmander earlier. And so why don't we start off with Zugrug. We're looking right now. Uh, just a lot of people ask about the items. We cannot see the items in spectator mode. We can see the score. We can see everybody's action on the map as we switch to it, of course. But one thing that the game does not allow is for us to see the items. As Snorlax, Zugrug is hanging out in the grass, but Xavier G is also going to be going into the grass and they're going to sniff each other out right there. It is a good spot to be waiting of course for those Combi and the Vespaquin that combo for that to arrive at 8.50 on the dot in the game's clock but Zugrug uh, normally going with Buddy Barrier Focus Band and Score Shield. Pretty much most of these you're going to see either a Buddy Barrier or a Score Shield. Usually it's Buddy Barrier. I mean these are just two really good items just when we're talking generally in a broad sense. Unfortunately Zugrug going to lose his life right there actually being overwhelmed by the orange Indy and Goof GG still around to support but some Sometimes this is how the cookie crumbles, and of course, as your tank, you are going to be out front. You are going to be tanking that damage, which is obvious, right? And so a lot of people interested in Lutano, of course, we have a lot of Lucario players out there. Oftentimes, people don't want it to slip by, especially when I'm commentating. You know, I always note that when you score little deposits, let's say anything below 10 points, you'll see Lucario doing that often, especially soloing this top lane. A lot of other people wish to make sure that I do mention that an attack weight is a large part of that. Should have realized that that wasn't necessarily a given, but of course, attack weight going to affect you every single time you score and so when you score in those smaller numbers it's obviously going to be much quicker than let's say trying to score anything above 20 and so you can not only get the benefits of the attack weight but you're also just going to get that experience you're going to get a burst of hp too so let's say you're kind of in trouble there as that lucario soloing that top lane when you score you're obviously going to get this boost of health that can keep you in the fight but here we go of course both squads sort of in this in-between point where we're waiting for dredna and rotom to appear but also seeing who can make these moves purple pretty far ahead by score and as far as early games go, but definitely not out of the realm of any comebacks. It's just we're only talking about early game. And so Lutano seeing that Toon right here has his hands full with this Ivysaur, Presto. But of course Ted Dexter, I guess that's Dexter, coming down with the Lucario on the orange squad to also assist right there. And so, good play by both squads, keeping everybody still alive, currently in the fight at least. You've gotta watch how Zugrug plays, and if anybody out there, especially if you're into being that defender type, supporting as a defender, but really being that tank, you know, Zugrug is a player to watch. Lutano obviously gonna teleport over to main be coming down, of course, because we have Dreadnought coming in about three seconds right now as we commentate this, and this is the good time to get those KOs, you know, before that Dreadnought shows up, if you can do it just before it shows up, but not too soon, because obviously everybody's respawn times at this point in the match, they're usually pretty quick, so they can come back into the fray somewhat quickly. It is a certain kind of dance right here, as Zugrug is going to start initiating, but just with one little punch, one basic attack, this is what we like to see, you know, it's going to be squad on squad right now, and the only one kind of missing from the equation was Toon for a little while, but Toon is coming back, rotating after some of that time too. And so, you know, did I describe this as a dance? I should have described it as a dance, because look, you can kind of see everybody dancing around each other as the Snorlaxes are the ones to initiate. That makes perfect sense, of course. You keep them out in front, keep them tanking, they can block, whatever they might need to do. As Orange Venusaur comes in and Snorlax, able to gang up on that Ivysaur, of course, on our legendary Team TV top number one team. Cramorant right now trying to kind of stay in between, and it looks like the right side team. Orange is actually going to get that Dreadnought as Zugrug just barely trying to get that steal, and unfortunately does not with that heavy slam. Now, Luke Tano, of course, going to score on that bottom goal. Oftentimes, you will see that whichever team gets that Dreadnought ends up kind of scoring a lot on that bottom lane. So if you can stop that process, more power to you, of course. But it looks like Orange did sort of have their hands full. You know, they were making sure Lutano wasn't going to break anything else. Lutano, though, obviously getting those points in, so that's great. And widening the gap, but look at this. I mean, if they can land any of these Orange squad, if they can land, you know, these 40s and there's a 35, that's actually going to be the Gatling Gold missile. And something you might want to notice, we can maybe do this on a replay. We couldn't see it directly in our field of view and everything with the camera 
Sora, but we could actually notice that that large, it's gonna appear as a red circle for Cramorant's area of effect for that Gatling Gulp Missile Unite move. You can actually, as a Cramorant player, use the eject button to move yourself even closer as someone's trying to escape. So to push yourself ahead, where normally, you know, you seem like you're pretty stagnant, of course, you can't really move around. And so that was very interesting. And so we obviously saw, you know, Snorlax, a few of them trying to just kind of run back and make sure that they were at an appropriate distance for handling this. But like I was saying earlier, you know, after that Dreadnought and seeing Orange with some of those major point deposits, they have now overtaken in score and none of these are outside the realm of comeback. So once again, we don't want to place too much emphasis on that. You know, it's all about the macro play. Who is getting the Dreadnought? Who is kind of positioning themselves? Which squad, let's say, for that final stretch? Really in that final stretch is when things can change, obviously. And wow, Zugrug being picked off. Purple Snorlax player, obviously. You gotta give props, of course, to Dexter the Lucario. That's on the orange squad, but also their Eldegoss keeping it in the fray. Both of them proving to, I think, keep, uh, you know, purple on their toes right here. So this will be good play, ladies and gentlemen. I hope the viewers at home can notice this. You know, try to observe everybody. And really, it's it's almost impossible as Orange now has a KO streak of two for their Venusaur. Not looking so good for the Legends here on Purple. Team TV, but Lutano is going to pull off that KO against this Eldegoss. That's one of the first things. You can take out the squishier Eldegoss, but also that's going to cripple their support, of course, for that Lucario to stay in the fight against Purple right now. And so very good. It looks like Orange actually also going to get the Rotom, as we see on the mini-map right here. Maybe real fast we can give Indie Bear some credit. I know we're having to just sort of switch to wherever the action is, and we can't usually stay on one player for too long. Obviously, forgive that, but Indy, usually playing Eldegoss, Blissey, one of their supports, and as Purple does try to put a stop to this row time, it looks like they are going to pretty soon after it was activated, but Indy Bear running with that Buddy Barrier XP share, Muscle Band, or Focus Band, good options too as your support, so kind of any combination of those four items, and uh, we do see, of course, a Pollen Puff Cotton Guard build with Indy Bear playing Eldegoss right now, and so it looks like we can see what's obvious, there are plenty of oranges taking on this Dreadnought, and it looks like Orange Squad is also going to get that Dreadnought, Zug does try to steal that once again with the Heavy Slam, very good attempt, very good move, but that was really, I mean, we, we've said it plenty of times, but Orange is actually doing very well against Purple right now. Should I use the cliche again of keeping them on their toes? But it really does seem so, you know. We had Orange getting that Rotom, getting that first Dreadnought, and this macro game is pretty good, but what you notice is, you know, a lot of these Purples on Team TV, this top number one team, actually, they're gonna get those KOs. Once again, we see a Cramorant Unite, very good when everybody starts getting bunched up and all of Purple comes down here. Good opportunity. But what we're getting at right now is that Purple was pretty scattered all over the map, and so actually Lutano losing his life right there to the Venusaur. Venusaur absolutely stacked. And for Orange, I would say pretty good crucial KO. But we can also see, you know, a lot of these larger point deposits are really on both squads. So, you know, not only does Venusaur and Snorlax right now for Orange actually going to the top lane, nobody there to contest that. Surprisingly, I thought that they were going to be followed right there. And just too late as Lutano does try to super over and try to get to it as the Lucario arrives. That's Lutano on the purple squad. Both that 50 and that 40 get in there, which is, you know, that's pretty devastating. Team TV still in this, obviously, though. We see that 141 to 206 right now. This is a, th that's doable for either squad, really, which really can attest to the level of play right here. And so we do see on the bottom lane, looks like Indy Bear is gonna get that 40. Very, very nice. They do need to break that bottom goal. It's only at five right now, just to have the turf, maybe if they are gonna go in for a Dreadnought burst before the Zapdos. We do have to see if it will arrive on the map within enough time. Sometimes not possible at all. And so I could have told you what tune as Sylveon kind of picks as the items as we get a seismic slam right there. Very pivotal. Not able to actually take out the Venusaur yet, but is going to pursue. And with that, eject button does get the KO. Great job on Toon, who does have a 50 right here and does need to watch out for Cramorant. It looks like it's being pursued by first the Cramorant. Very nice. That almost looked like psychic. Like, I mean, I've seen this before from Toon and unfortunately going to lose his life right there. That was also pretty critical because that's going to be a major point loss as well, having 50 in his hands. But I was going to say, we've seen Toon almost act as if he knows what's going to happen before it happens. And in that case, he foresaw the attack from Cramorant just before it happened. So maybe again, if we can play a replay. And so I was wrong about that Dreadnought. The timer, of course, on that was uh, certainly not enough because it's obviously not going to show up if Zapdos does appear on the screen. They're not going to have Dreadnought and Zapdos. And so we are past that final stretch just now. And so this is where, you know, this is the exact kind of match that we want to see at 214 to 206 right now, Purple's favor. But that's such a small point difference, you know, where now the points are going to be doubled. You can almost just get one or two wild Pokemon KO and change that, make that difference up. But obviously very high point values from either team ready to be dropped in. We just gotta see as there's gonna be some Unite moves. This is gonna be one of the skirmishes that's the most important right here. And Lutano knows it. The Purple Squad knows it. Very good spot for that Cramorant to be in. You know, it's just using that Gatling Gulp Missile Unite move. It's sort of blocked by layers of other Pokemon, other characters guarding it, perhaps taking the damage, you know. So to get
get to that Cremorant, you'd have to go through, for instance, an Orange Snorlax and Orange Lucario, and that's uh, no easy feat, of course. As that Orange Snorlax does go down, but also Zugrug, Purple Snorlax, is out as well. So those kind of major blockers, tankers, gonna be out of there. But we see Venusaur obviously tanking a lot of this right now with Goof GG. Goof usually running Buddy Barrier, Focus Band, Muscle Band. Good item set for Venusaur. And unfortunately for Lutano, gonna go down to the Venusaur. I was just about to comment. Lutano ready to drop in some much needed high points to widen the score gap right here. And any KO at this point, great. So we actually see Goof as the Venusaur going to take down Orange Cramorant just a second ago. Dexter Orange Lucario actually in the grass with the Aura. Ready for that Unite, but does not do it. And we'll keep our eyes peeled, but here, but we can see it. Actually, Toon is gonna drop in this 50. That's gonna be a hundo right here for Purple. As also we see a 36 from Orange Venusaur and that 43 looking to get dropped by Orange Lucario right here. Can Indy Bear stop it? Just as an Eldegoss going up against a score shield with Lucario right here, who was already halfway done with that score. Unfortunately, unable to. So that was pretty massive to keep Orange in this game. Purple still ahead just by a small amount. And so this is, it's getting pretty wild, ladies and gentlemen, as we only have 15 seconds left in Purple. No, Orange is actually gonna score that. That's 48 for Orange right here. That is unbelievable. We're gonna see that Orange actually took it ahead. And we don't know who's in the lead right now. We cannot see the score. What? It's gonna be a 24 and then a 100 from Purple. And then also a 26 from Orange from their Venusaur. I, we really don't have a, an, an exact idea of which team is gonna win this. But no, that's gonna be 454 for Purple. Team TV coming out on top in such a hard fought battle. That was actually down to the last five or six seconds. If you are looking for an exhibit in the top performers in Pokemon Unite, this was the match to see. Go back, study it well, or click an end screen on screen to see another one, ladies and gentlemen. Magnificent. And I will catch you on the next vid. And thanks for viewing.